Today we welcome Inter Milan, the Serie A giants, to the velodrome. It is match day four in the UEFA Champions League. How are we getting on? Hey guys, Gamer James here. Welcome along to episode 49 of the Marseille save. Today then, yeah, we've got Inter coming to the velodrome. We'll have a look at them in a bit more detail uh, and the uh, their squad, their history in the save so far. We'll see how they've been getting on in Italy. Um, just to give you an idea of the the task ahead of us. Um, we've got a few matches to catch up on, so let's get to it. So the first game then after that draw in Lisbon was a potential banana skin away at Stade Brestois. Um, we managed to scrape the win. We got the goal just after the half hour mark, Francisco Javier scoring it. He's had an incredible October. Um, you'll see as we go through the results. This was the first match in October. Um, and it was the month of Francisco Javier. We had 26 shots on goal, eight on target. Just look at all those bookings for Stade Brestois. They came into this game to maim us. They had a player sent off as well, just about 20 minutes from the end, but they just came out to, to break us. Um, how many is it? Two, four, six, seven bookings. And the red card was a straight red as well. So absolutely disgraceful performance from the home team but after that Lisbon game this was a, a match that we really needed to put three points on the board so very very relieved to do just that so after that Stade Brestois game there was an international break um, so we did we did have a friendly uh, we went to Arsenal went to the Emirates we lost 1-0 didn't really turn up didn't play well uh, won't we bother showing you that after that it was another away trip in Liga and to Valenciennes rock bottom and really really in trouble this season Valenciennes we dispatched them easily enough in the end you can see from the stats 29 shots 21 of them on target we were just sensational in this game uh, Francisco Javier netted twice in a couple of minutes um, around about the quarter hour mark Jerry Mbakogu did get the home side back in it uh, just a few minutes later, but nine minutes from half time, Santiago Asasibar scored to make it 3 1, give us daylight. Again, they had plenty of bookings. Abdullah Konate was sent off just after half time for a, uh, for a second yellow, but we couldn't. Uh, we couldn't get uh, another goal. Their goalkeeper, I mean, he's only got a 6.8, but we had. We scored three goals, but we had 21 shots on target. He made 18 saves. How's he only got a 6.8? None of the goals were his fault. He didn't throw the ball in his own net. He played really, really well. He's not even listed as their best player. He made 18 saves. What more do you have to do as a keeper to get more than a 6.8? Ridiculous. So it was then back to Champions League action. On the road again, though, going to Milan to face today's opponents, Inter, on match day three. And we got absolutely hammered in the opening half an hour inter just came tearing out of the blocks they were two nil up after five minutes three nil up just past the half hour balde Keita got all the goals uh, we it looked like then it was going to end up six or seven i wouldn't have had any complaints they just slaughtered us from the start uh, but three minutes before half time peone sisto did get us back into the game a little bit I, I just went at them at half time, aggressively said, what are you playing at? You're better than this. Um, and we did put up a more of a fight. Uh, Moussa Dembele missed a penalty or had a penalty saved just past the hour mark, which could have had one of two effects, I guess. We could have got back into the game, maybe got a draw, or it could have angered in turn. We could have ended up losing 6-2. Uh, as it is, Benjamin Stambouli scored in the 90th minute to, uh, to give a little bit of respectability. Coming away with a 3-2 defeat is not the end of the world, really, judging by how that first half an hour went. Uh, you look at the stats, and we were clinical with our finishing. Uh, nine shots, seven of them on target. But, yeah, we were just blown away. Um, that lightning start, we've got to watch for that today. Mario Cardi did get injured. I'm hoping he's out today. 
and we finally returned to the velodrome four games in a row away from home five if you count the friendly at arsenal and we had Nancy. now again this was one of those games where the longer it went on the more nervous i got because we were far 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 superior to our um, our visitors 20 shots to their six but we only managed to put six on target we it was just really really frustrating but then vincento marchetti scored a brilliant goal to break the deadlock and max arias came on for musa dembele who is in a rotten rotten run of form uh, came on and eventually scored what proved to be the winner 10 minutes from time anthony cura got a goal back for nonsi uh, a minute after arias's goal but we held on we got the three points and that's all that matters especially when it's one of those games that could easily have finished nil nil or one nil to the opposition you just get out of there with the points if you can and move on and this result i did not see coming at all uh, away at bordeaux rematch of the coupe de france final and we absolutely destroyed them on their own patch they were never ever ever in the game i know you can look at the stats here you can look at the times of the goals that we scored to make the results safe we were just all over them the whole match lucas prato scored their goal a brought it back to 2-1 and I was worried then when he brought it back to 2-1 uh, Francisco Javier netted a brilliant hat-trick Max Arias played the full 90 minutes scored two great goals in the last five minutes uh, but you just look at that uh, we scored on 85 87 and then 90 plus three it was a ridiculously good performance we just kept going kept going kept going wouldn't give up wouldn't let them get the equalizer and yeah we, I mean we we had more of the ball double their shots we put 16 shots on target really really good performance probably our best ever away result considering it was at Bordeaux absolutely stunning and that is the results recap done uh, you can see then that we we're in okay form even the games that we're winning apart from the Bordeaux one the, the last few games that we've winning they felt like a real slog they felt like we've really had to just be patient and just take a chance when it comes um, but that win against Bordeaux I'm hoping gives us a lot of confidence going into the Inter game now because we really could do with a positive result from it let's have a quick look at the league earn table we are third but we're level with Monaco and PSG Lyon are now starting to drop away and considering ourselves and PSG have a game in hand on them and Monaco have two games in hand on them they could be really cut adrift in the coming weeks Monaco are absolutely on fire at the minute nine wins and two draws from their 11 games they are just a machine right now um, and I'm hard pushed to think that they won't take the title it's definitely going to be closer this season that I am sure of I cannot wait to get more to get further down the line and to see how the table shapes up but it is looking really really promising at the minute so this is our Champions League group then at the minute group E as it stands after three games no surprise top seeds into our top they've won all three of their games scoring six goals and conceding two both conceded of course against ourselves gives us a bit more confidence today sporting are level with us but we're ahead of them on the head-to-head -head rule because we've got the 2-2 draw in lisbon so they're playing debrechen today we're playing inter of course after this we then play debrechen and sporting play inter and that could be really really vital as well that our last game is against sporting and that is going to be a huge huge match that is going to be the live com in episode 50 we reach our half century it's going to matter it looks like that game against sporting is going to matter um it looks like it's going to be winners take second place so that should be a really good one definitely definitely you need to be checking out episode 50 when it comes around so i said it october was the month of francisco javier and it culminated in him taking the player of the month accolade uh, six goals in four matches an 8.25 average rating far and away 
clear of Kylian Mbappe, who is absolutely killing it this season. And Anthony Cura, uh, who we saw score in the roundup of Nancy. But Francisco Javier, I mean, we'll just go in and have a quick look at him here now. This kid, unbelievable player. He really is. We've got him for £30 million. Pounds. He's worth 28 and a half. He is a wonder kid. Uh, I'm training him as the inside forward, as you know, but the guy is just something else. I don't know how long it'll be before someone comes in and pays big money for this guy because he is awesome. So we've got our lineup picked, I think, to face Inter. Uh, good news is Pedrag Rajkovic is back from injury now and I'm putting him back in for today's match. Alban Lafont has been superb stepping in, but I think the experience of Rajkovic hopefully will see us see us through this match. Uh, Faitu Moasa at left back, Malangsar, Eric Bai in the centre of defence, Kyle Walker at uh, right back. I'm going with Mark Chetty and Asasibar, young, energetic, hungry players in midfield. And then it's Memphis Depay, Bruno Fernandes, Francisco Javier. And at the minute, we've got God up front, but he's been absolutely abysmal recently. You can see there, the last five games, a 6.42 rating. He hasn't scored in about six games, I think. He's been absolutely atrocious. I've gone, I've, I've had private chats with him. I've told him he needs to pick up his form, otherwise he's going to be dropped. Max Arias, after those two goals against Bordeaux, he's played really well every time he's come on. He's looked really dangerous. Before I hit continue, I need to make a decision on who plays. Hmm... These then are the two lineups. It's a very strong interside, of course. Balde Keita was the, the man in the first leg, as you saw. Uh, they play inside forwards as well, so we've really got to be careful with him. Paco Alcacer is playing up top. Mauro Icardi, I've just had a look at him. The injury he suffered against us, damaged cruciate ligaments. He's out for seven months. Ouch. Um, they've got a pretty solid midfield. So they're, they're going to look to counter on us, I think. They, I mean, it's listing it as a 4-1-4-1, but it's, it's more of a 4-3-2-1, I guess, or a 4-1-2-2-1, maybe. Um, but it looks like they're going to be looking to get it out to the wings and then building from there. So I, I'm not confident, but I'm optimistic that we can get a result here, for sure. I definitely think we can. Paco Alcacer is not Mauro Icardi. He is not as good as uh, as the man he is replacing. We are going to tell them to get revenge after that 3-2 defeat. Could have ended up with a draw in that. Could have ended up getting hammered. So let's see how it goes. We will get... Click the, the live scores up. Why are the latest scores not there? What is going on there? There we go. There they are. So we kick the game off, the velodrome, European night, you could just feel the atmosphere, it would be an incredible occasion. Straight in then with the first highlight, I did go for Moussa Dembele, I went for the experience, the guy's got 143 goals, oh Francisco Javier continues that amazing form, what a hit. Yeah, Moussa Dembele, 143 goals in 177 games, I counted them earlier absolute legend he's just got big game experience i had to go for it if it's not working i'll give uh, arias half an hour but i had to go i had to go with god it's the biggest game of the season so far as francisco javier has another chance kyle walker with the throw javier to marchetti that's a great save and it's scrambled away kyle walker with the throw francisco javier Marchetti, Memphis. Oh, he's gone past his man. He's got the shot away, and that is into the side netting. I thought the keeper saved that. Apparently not, but what a good start from us. Really, really encouraging. Here's Memphis again. Digs the ball across. Marchetti, Francisco Javier. It is all going through our Spanish wonder kid at the minute. He is definitely, definitely the danger man right now. Marchetti with the corner, and it's cleared away. Here's Pavon. Oh, good tackle by Moassa. Memphis coming forward. Played it through for Dembele. Oh, that was a chance. And you just, that is a player out of form right there. Ah, oh, here's us on the defensive. Come on, 
Pavon Alcacer. Oh, wow. That's their first, and it says they've had three shots and three on target. That is their first highlight on the attack. It's a really good finish, but oh, would, that, would Lafont have saved that? Oh, straight back in from the kickoff. Ah, come on, boys. That is not good. That is not good. Alcacer, he's coming forward. Is he going to score again? No, Bruno Fernandes gets to it. Memphis now. Launches Dembele away. Dembele's clear. Score. No. Oh, Dembele, what, he, what is happening to you? Here's Memphis. Keep it going. Come on. Good hit. Just wide. Pavon wins the header. Here's Alcacer. Great tackle. Malang Sar. Memphis. Bruno Fernandes. I, I can't believe the chances that Dembele's missed already, but that is a fantastic pass and Javier has toe poked it wide. Yeah, I cannot believe those chances that Dembele has missed. Can't help but feel if Max Arias had been there, he would have he would have put them away. Have I made a massive, massive error showing loyalty to God? Ah, here's Francisco Javier cutting inside. Good run, but no one showed for the pass. Here's Murillo. Balde Keita. Oh no, he's lifted it over for Alcacer. Get to him. That's a penalty, isn't it? Oh my god. This is not going well. Yellow card for Malang Sar. I mean, we are third seeds. Inter are the top seeds in the group. Um, it's not unexpected to be struggling at home against them, but... Oh, I really thought we could do something in this game. Alcacer steps up and scores, and it's an unhappy return to the team for Pedro Grajkovic. And Paco Alcacer, I, I said he was not worth worrying about, didn't I, before the game? And he scored two before half-time. It's going from bad to worse here. Kyle Walker has picked up an injury as well, so it looks like we're going to have to maybe think about bringing him off. The only bright no at the minute is that it is still nil-nil in Hungary. Sporting have not scored as yet. If that did finish nil-nil, this wouldn't be the end of the world. Malang Sar, be careful, son, going in for those tackles. He is a sassy bar. Out to Javier. He has gone quiet since the uh, since about 20 minutes in. Here he is again, though. What can you do now? Go on, go on, go on. He's played Dembele in, and Dembele got the shot on target Sergio Rico makes the save oh this is so demoralizing because we have done really really well before their first goal we were dominant we were coming at them and they just caught us with a sucker punch and then the penalty and ah, oh, so frustrating come on can we get a goal before half time come on no is it going to be 3-0 Gerson into the wall with the free kick Pavon Stark Keita hasn't been as deadly in this match, Balde Keita. Here's Javier, Bruno Fernandes, Moussa Dembele, Francisco Javier, pull it across. He does, there's Memphis. <sighs> Rico with the free kick. Here's João Mario and Eric Bay with a big header there. Here's Memphis. What can you do? Cutting in, good ball. Oh, Mary gets to it. But there it's played through for Dembele. Oh, it's a big save from Sergio Rico. So we're 2-0 down at half-time. Ah, we're going to have to get aggressive with them. And we're going to say, I want to see more from you in the second half. We played really, really well and we did get caught. Um, but you can't you can't have them be 2-0 down. It just, it just can't happen. Um, we've got a problem as well with Kyle Walker. In the, I haven't got a right-back on, <laughs> on the bench. That's not going to go down well, is it? He's going to have to carry on. And we've got tired players in the squad as well. Ah, oh, we're going to go attacking. Do you know what? We're going to go attacking. We're going to try and rescue this. It is still nil-nil in Hungary as well, which, as I say, would be the silver lining here. Here's Alcacer, Pavon. Rajkovic saves. So we, we just calmly told them to get creative. I know Loki Doki likes that instruction and a few other people now started using it. Look at these, look at those ratings. Rykov oh, and that is another thing that I've 
I've done. Oh, as Mwasa nearly scores. I, I read a tip online that said put your goalkeeper on free kicks. So I'd forgotten I'd done that, actually. <laughs> so I've tried that. Uh, yeah, that's going to end well, isn't it? Um, oh, look at those ratings. They are just abysmal, aren't they? I'm going to have to make a change in a minute. Kalas heads the free kick away. Here's Bakayoko and Muasa, And it's a corner. Number 14 now on corners. And none of them have actually looked like they're going to do anything. Here's Bruno Fernandes. No, it's just dealt with too easily. Bakayoko and corner number 15 incoming. Oh, no, went for a goal kick, apparently. Hmm. All right, let's make this substitution. We've got five minutes to go. Look, look at Moussa Dembele, a 6.1. The guy is 25. He is declining ridiculously now. I don't understand what is happening with him all of a sudden. He has just died completely. He is rubbish all of a sudden. Uh, I'm going to bring Andrea Zivkovic on for Francisco Javier because meh. I have too many tired players. I can't make enough substitutions to, um, to freshen things up. For some reason, this game has taken chunks out of both of both teams. Look at those ratings and the fitnesses. It is terrible. Uh, we have lost. This is going to be the exit highlight, but Sporting have only drawn in Hungary, which swings things massively in our favour. That really, really does. We'll have a look at the group in a second, but we are going to we're going to absolutely rip them apart in that because. We should have done better there, and I can't help but feel if I'd have played Arias, we would have got on the score sheet today because Moussa Dembele is just rubbish at the moment. So after match day four, this is the state of play in our group. We are now third, so it is now in seed order. Uh, Inter are through. They've qualified. They've won the group after four matches which could have a massive impact. When you think back to last season, um, Atletico Madrid had won the group going into the final game and they went to Porto and lost, which meant that Porto finished second. We beat Tottenham and got third. And of course, we went on and won the Europa League, but it cost us our qualification place. And now Inter go to Portugal next to play Sporting. And if they rest players, if they don't turn up for that match, that's going to really have an impact. Uh, we played Brexton away. Hopefully we can do better than Sporting did there. Um, whatever happens, assuming we don't lose in Hungary, um, it should still be alive going into match day six. That is the hope anyway, because I'd really like that Sporting game to be episode 50, because it's a big, big game. On a big big landmark so I mentioned about uh, Moussa Dembele and his form dropping off a cliff and you can just see it here I mean I don't know what has happened since the last video um, against Sporting but he has just completely dropped off a cliff he's not even had one remotely decent performance his highest rating in the last six games has been a 6.8 uh, against Valenciennes when he got an assist. Other than that, he has been atrocious. And if you look at his attributes, they're just plummeting. I I just do not understand what is going on with this guy at the minute. I cannot get my head around it, but I'm really, really worried. So we do have quite a few games to get through before episode 50, before hopefully uh, that sporting game. Hopefully the Champions League group is still alive coming into that we do have another international break coming up you can see there we've got Torino um, in the MITIF trophy semi-final now MITIF M-I-T-I-F stands for more important than international football <laughs> so yeah we've got a little tournament coming up over the weekend of the international break but in terms of competitive games it's Nice at home Lille away in league earn then the away game in Hungary against De Bretzen before Ligue 1 games at home and against Montpellier and Caen and Angers away. So there'll be plenty to catch up on in the next episode. If for whatever reason Sporting is, a, is an irrelevant game, then we'll probably play maybe Caen or Lorient or someone like that. But 
Episode 50 will be an interesting game, no matter who it is that we play. Hopefully, I'll have fixed Musa by then as well. So, <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, click like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hopefully, whoever we play in episode 50, we can damn well win for once. Cheers for watching. See you later.